Hi, my name is Glenn Henry. I'm the face and fingers behind Sprite Orange Studios, a micro solo-ish game development studio based out of Kingston, Jamaica. We're dedicated to exploring narratives and interactive media throughout the Caribbean, but specifically at, here at home in Jamaica. I've always had a love for video games um, and, a very, and a strong love of art as well. Growing up, I would always be doodling and drawing and et cetera. But I had a strong tech inclination, so computer science, programming, that kind of stuff. Uh, the idea of making my own video game was always exciting to me. And during my final year of university, uh, uh, a little movie called The Indie Game, The Movie came out, which kind of showcased other creators globally, you know, kind of pulling their own projects together, um, making things by themselves, right? So it's not a team of 100 people putting out a AAA title. It's a team of two or three, you know, recording audio using their phones or things like that. And it kind of showed me that, you know, we didn't necessarily have to go abroad. You didn't have to... Um, join a huge 100-man team. You can do this on your own. You can make on your own. So it kind of gave me that kick in the pants to know, just, just do it. Coming out of watching that movie and you know, figuring out you know, how I, what I want to do and how I can go about doing it, making smaller games by myself, um, I continued to make tiny projects participating in game jams, those type of things. <clears throat> and they were all released under the name Sprite Range, which was just a combination of the word, you know, Sprite, which is a reference to the art assets that go into the games, and Wrench, which is the idea of building. Um, in 2019, so I would have done that from like 2010, and then in 2019, we decided to kind of formalize the entire structure, and I registered as Sprite Range Studios. I am the primary technical assets for my projects, as well as the primary creative. So I do all the art, I do well most of the art, and I do most of the programming. So by putting the two together, I'm able to kind of bring my stories to life and allow people to interact with them and you know design cool systems and things of that nature. And that is how I've been operating for the time being. And as for what we do specifically, it's making smaller narrative focused games for PC and mobile. Uh, I kind of draw from multiple sources. I'm a lifelong gamer, so I, I play games recreationally a lot. So if I find a particular system interesting or a mechanic, you know, kind of really cool, I, see, I try and think of ways to build out on that or to spin it in a different way, or if I can take that and apply that to another idea or concept or something else that kind of caught my eye or has just wedged itself in the back of my brain. So that's kind of one avenue that I mine for new ideas. Another avenue is my own personal experiences. Um, I have, I want to say extensive experience right now in business. I've gone from IT officer straight up to a uh, general management position. So I kind of have an understanding of the mundane aspects of day-to-day -day business. And I find that I could mine that for uh, one of my more recent games, Grim and Tonic, to kind of just touch on some of the you know, minutia and the trial and the difficulty just navigating day-to-day -day business life, right? So I kind of draw from life experiences and draw from other um, points of inspiration. Um, another thing that I try to do as well is to inject my own, my own sense of self. There are just a couple like rules that I end up sticking into my games. So for argument's sake, uh, if I can make the option, make a, make a character black, more than likely I'm going to make them black. You have to give me a very good reason why I would want to change their race. If I can give them dreadlocks, I'm going to give them dreadlocks. Um, little things like that. So it's a mixture between my interests, um, my background, and my own uh, conscious input that goes into the ideation or the source material for some of my games.
I feel like cultural representation is actually pretty important. However, I am more interested in the way that we define and the way that we navigate culture. Um, none of my games by themselves are stereotypically Jamaican. They don't, like, you don't necessarily see a flag um, printed on the wall, or you don't necessarily see the stereotypical experiences of uh, a Jamaican resident. But in the same breath, I am a Jamaican, so that by, by definition, they're Jamaican games. So what I'm most interested in just going forward and what I want to do with my, my entire body of work, because I'm at a point where I'm now looking back you know, artistically and saying, what does my work, what does my work say about me and, and the life that I've lived? And I'm trying to put more of a conscious effort of sharing my own experiences there. So I mentioned, you know, being black, having dreadlocks, right? Um, in the previous game, Grim and Tonic, there was a random character who was a West Indian immigrant. Um, I tried to pull on different stories and try to integrate them in because I want them to have a Jamaican feel. But at the same time, I don't think we generally have a broad understanding of what a Jamaican experience is is because it's a little bit more than you know a flag a little bit more than dreadlocks and a little bit more than you know afghan saltfish there's something more there and i want to see if we can mine that for what, all that it can be i feel like trying to pin down exactly how i've been innovating feels like a small act of hubris but if i have to think about something that i am doing differently um, I really have to go back and speak about the community um, that I've been trying to develop the past couple of years. Uh, the Jamaica Game Developer Society has started as a small group of five friends, and we've kind of grown into a grassroots group of about 200 people, a Discord server of about 200 people. And one of the main things and the main point of value behind this community is it acts as a hub for sharing ideas, sharing experiences and sharing knowledge. Because a lot of the ways, in a lot of ways, Jamaica is kind of lagging behind, especially as it relates to creatives and creative education. Um, we're making strides now and we're getting the backing that we should have always had. But just those spaces where those people who are creatively inclined can you know, meet other people like them and try out new ideas, discuss topics, you know, and kind of build out a voice. Those are the hotbeds for where a culture gets defined. Those, those conversations are where, you know, a community gets developed and a unique, um, for lack of a better word, voice gets um, tempered. And I think that is probably the most, if there's anything I would say that is innovative, it would be definitely that community and being active and helping that community grow. This is something I actually think about a lot, especially because of the community um, development efforts. So in the short term, what I would want is to kind of bridge the gap, the bridge the education gap, so that more people are aware of all the roles and jobs that exist within game development itself. It's a little bit more than coding um, and pretty pictures. And you have a broad set of skill sets coming from all over the place. You have producers, you have sound engineers, you have marketing experts. All of these people add to the overall experience of you know, development straight through launch and continued um, management. So uh, in the short term, I figure covering that gap uh, is the most important. We've been trying to do efforts through the JGDS to kind of bring in experts from uh, abroad, um, different, um, yeah, different, different um, continents to kind of talk on their areas of expertise. Uh, so that is one, one way we want to address that. Um, if there were more focused efforts from the formal education sector, that would be good, like job fairs or things that affect specifically around animation and game development. That would be excellent. In the long term, what I would love to see are more independent creators coming out, striking out, and being able to sustain themselves completely through their creative output. Right. So that is going full time as an independent developer. So you've made enough money off your games to sustain yourself. I think this is actually pretty 
pretty feasible for any developer um, in, the, in Jamaica specifically because of how the dollar works really and truly because you're earning money from all over the world while living in Jamaica. Um, long term, I would love if there could be a Caribbean wide publishing house specifically for games so that we can maintain and control the stories that we tell and make sure that they're not necessarily mined and stripped of any bit of authenticity by outside players. That would be ideal. One, one piece of advice is actually, I'm gonna cheat and say it's two. Uh, the first thing is just get started, just get out there, just try. And that was a bit of advice that I took away from the movie way back then, it was just get started. The tools are often there if you just, you know, take up the effort to look. Uh, so that's the very first thing. So if you are a marketer, but you want to learn about, you know, community management or marketing for games, reach out to somebody on Twitter. You can reach out to me on Twitter. You can reach out to most independent developers. They're, they're willing to ask questions. You can send a one email. They're, they're willing to answer. Um, and then the second thing is probably participate in game jams. There are small hackathons that are happen annually, monthly, daily. I think there was one that was even hourly that had an hour long hack game jam where you are charged with making a game in an hour. But yeah, just find one, uh, join it, get the experience of carrying an idea from ideation through to finishing and then repeat that until you, know, you kind of find Find out you know what part of the process you love the most um and where you can bring the most value yeah i think that is that that's it for me that's my advice all right so shameless plug uh i just released quest night pocket for android it's on the google play store search for it check it out it's a monster hunting rpg uh made homegrown has a bunch of cute designs in there and you can go ahead and beat them up and collect resources and make better gear. It's excellent, it's a fun time, check it out. Uh, as for where you can find, find more of my work and more about me, you can check out my website, which is spritewrench.com or you can find me on pretty much all the social media platforms, Twitter, Instagram, everywhere as at spritewrench. Um, and if you want to learn more about the Jamaica Game Developer Society, check us out at jgds.org.